What's up, Vancouver? Today we have a very special guest, Dina Goldstein. Dina Goldstein is joining us now from Vancouver. La controversial artista canadiense, Dina Goldstein. Dina Goldstein. Fallen Princesses collection from photographer uh, Dina Goldstein. Dina, thanks for having us here. Thanks for inviting me. Can you please tell us uh, where you grew up? I grew up mostly here in Vancouver, which um, has completely transformed over the years. But I grew up on the west side of Vancouver and now I'm pretty much always on the east side. Nice. When did you get your first camera? My first real, real camera would be the Nikon FE. <laughs> and you know, I guess you have to be a little bit, uh, a little bit older to remember it. It was a film camera, very manual. Do you miss uh, working with film? I love film, and even once in a while, I do shoot it when I travel. I have this uh, medium format almost a point and shoot camera and I love it and I guess if I was going to do medium format again uh, I, I mean if I was going to uh, part of me shoot film again it would be medium format so I do use it every once in a while but digital is just so so much um, more uh, flexible and I appreciate it. <laughs> Now, where did you go to school? Did you have any training schooling? I did. I, w when I studied photography, there wasn't the program that I wanted, which was photojournalism. So I kind of created my own program using courses, uh, undergrad courses, and mixing it with photography. What was your, have you had any influences growing up, uh, like personally or professionally? I definitely was influenced by art in general. I loved going to museums and, uh, and seeing as much art as I could. Um, in regards to photography, I guess it's the image. The image has always been so prominent and there have been images that are just uh, kind of burnt into my brain. They're so powerful that they speak so many words, that, you know, uh, images that have as much impact as a movie or a book or any other sort of artistic medium. How powerful can an image be? Very powerful. I, I used to do a talk that I would present to secondary and uh, post-secondary students and I would have all these um, images roll by and they were images of mostly, mostly photojournalistic type images. There's this one image that I remember of a man's hand and then a little uh, little African boy's hand on top of it. And the, it, it, the little hand was just so tiny and shriveled up. And it represented the famine in uh, Africa. And that one image was so powerful that it actually um, ha orchestrated this big fundraiser and uh, it's still actually, now when I look at it, it's still powerful. Have you had any mentors while pursuing this profession? I, I've had a lot of um, support. I, you know, mentors, you can find mentorship with, from a lot of people, kind of take little, what I've done is taken little bits. Well, do you have any advice for any inspiring photographers or? people wanting to break in to the field? I certainly do. I think that the advice that I give the people who come into the studio and intern with me um, is always to just keep on shooting and keep on experimenting and kind of bring people in, people who are also um, wanting to learn and, uh, and, and needing the experience and, and keep on uh, moving forward, shooting, making mistakes, screwing up, getting better. I, I think it's, it's about doing it. And a lot of people I notice today, especially the millennials, they have 
um, they have trouble just getting themselves moving and going. So once you do, you'll find that it's once you get going, it's, it's a road of discovery. Yeah, exactly. Well, you talked about interns. How many do you have a team that works with you? How many people do you usually have on board for a shoot or in any given day? I shoot very rarely. Most of the work is around the shoot. So um, finding locations, casting, making arrangements, it's all like a puzzle. Most of the time we're at the studio, it's just that. It's uh, organizing and producing. And then when we actually get to the shoots, I have a crew that I've worked with for quite a few years, um, assistants, makeup artists, and then I bring in people who want to learn, who want to donate their time, and, and they can be on set, and hopefully they get something out of that as well. How do you cast for your shoots? Where do you find your models? I find my models everywhere. I do a lot of street casting, I reach out to agents, I reach out to actors that maybe are local, and even though I don't know them, I would like to meet them, would like to see if they could work um, for whatever project I'm photographing. But a lot of my work is to try to convince people to come on board to participate, uh, especially if I'm doing this on the street. <laughs> so trying to introduce myself, let them know what I do, who I am and what I do, and um, and hope that they are excited about the project and want to come on board. Where do you find inspiration for each shoot? Or is there a common kind of a theme with, with most of them? Or Initially, I was inspired by my daughter. Suddenly came home with this obsession of uh, Disney princesses. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I didn't really understand where it came from and how it affected her so profoundly. So I, I kind of investigated that and then came up with a way to interpret Disney princesses today. Of course, it was very critical work. I'm happy to say that since then, since my uh, project came out, The Fallen Princesses, I believe that Disney has listened to the girls of the modern era because they, they're actually, the narratives are changing and it's not just about being saved by a handsome prince anymore. In a sense, my work uh, always has a message, always holds up a mirror to society and I hope has a voice or I hope that I have a voice and I am, I am saying what I need to say through my images. Maybe it's a loud voice. <laughs> well, ha has Disney ever contacted you? <laughs> they did not contact me to ask me uh, to remove my images or to slap me with any sort of lawsuit. They actually contacted me because they wanted to include my work on their website alongside Annie Leibovitz and her series. I don't know if you know, but for the past uh, few years she's been doing a continuous series on Disney characters. I don't know why I didn't that, know that. Oh. And then I continued, I continued with, uh, with in, in being inspired by my daughters and I went on to photograph uh, Barbie and Ken and again along with all my work there's a lot of research and here I uh, found that Barbie and Ken are were actually brother and sisters in real life and Ken was uh, openly gay. I started kind of thinking how they were brought together by Mattel forcefully for 50 years to, to be in this marriage and here it is falling apart. In the meanwhile, Barbie is falling apart and ends up having a nervous breakdown. How long does it take for you to set up a shoot? You said you don't shoot very often, but um, you have a team kind of prepping and you get location scouting and that kind of stuff. So how long does it take from to do that, basically? Sometimes I work one shot at a time, although I never release anything until the whole series is completed. But I will perhaps jump from one picture to the other in production if something is available, if someone is available, I'll be flexible to try to get 
that particular um, shot done. But I work in series, so I, I'm, I'm there for the long run. Sometimes it takes me a year to shoot the series, sometimes two years. In this case, I just completed um, commissioned work for the Contemporary Jewish Museum of San Francisco, and I had seven months to shoot a whole series. And that was uh, quite the challenge. But it was a matter of getting down to work and just doing it. So where can we find you? Do you have any exhibits coming up? or? My next exhibit is in San Francisco. And I'm working on showing uh, Modern Girl, which um, was a series that I released in November, and I opened it in Paris, France. I haven't really had a, a chance to show it here in Vancouver, and I'd really like to. They are 12 uh, satirical ads inspired by Chinese um, advertising posters of the 30s. Of course, I was inspired uh, by the Chinese culture here in this city which has become very prominent over the last 30 years. Uh, what publications have you been in? I've been in quite a few publications. My work is also included in textbooks in Europe and used as tools for classroom discussion and discourse, yeah, in the right. classroom. What is your favorite Vancouver pastime when you're not busy setting up your, your shoots? <laughs> <My> <laughs> Well, I have a family, I have two daughters, and the best thing about living here is that you can just walk out of your house uh, and find a forest somewhere, and I love that. You know, every weekend can be an adventure. This Living in Vancouver is uh, it's a real gift because we have this thriving metropolis that is surrounded by so much natural beauty and if you don't take advantage of that, you gotta be crazy. You know, skiing in the winter and the beach in the summer, the forest all throughout the whole year. Yeah, so we're really, really lucky to live here. All right, well, thank you very much for uh, being on the show and uh, I can't wait to go and see one of your exhibits. I'd love for you to and I'd, I hope that it, I'll be uh, showing something pretty soon here, but I, I show regularly in Europe and uh, in the States. What's your story, Vancouver? Our city, our stories.